deliver your wonderful God up, mighty God up, an everlasting God, a God of everything that cleanses us, washes us, that protects us, Lord God. You supply every one of our needs up according to your riches in glory. For your word is saying the cattle or the
to serve him day and night. We have received much in order from our sovereign Jesus Christ. And we all report the duty expeditiously. We all report the duty right away. Amen. And when we report the duty, we gotta have one in our eyes. We gotta have the sword of the spirit. The blessed fight of the righteous.
riches and glory. Honor and power. Uh, to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is a mighty. And the Lord our God is a miracle. The Lord our God. He is wonderful. I'm so happy to have the master for Christ this morning. To be a representative of our kingdom here on earth. Amen. For the Lord our God.
say, I can't help but to shout. I can't help but tears to flow down my eyes because of how good God is been to us. Amen. And I'm not deserving of God's goodness because I'm a dirty, rotten, sick, and sinner. Amen. But because of God's grace and His divine mercy, He has shown us His love. Amen. That's why we say hallelujah. Salvation and glory. It's not about us. It's all about Him. For He is the one who is worthy of our glory. He is the one that's worthy of our honor. He's the one that's worthy of our praise. But we give it all to him, amen. I'm not giving it to the Redskins. I'm not giving it to the Wizards. I'm not giving it to the Celtics. I'm not giving it to LeBron. I'm not giving it to Bill Russell. I'm not even giving it to Mike. I'm giving it to the master in his name. It's Jesus Christ, amen. And he is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. He is the ancient of days. He is from everlasting to everlasting. From the beginning to the end, amen. Alpha and Omega, he is. He is the one that caused the world to twirl on its axis and caused the planets and space to take its rightful place, amen. He is the divine ruler of this universe, amen. We might think that Satan is in control, but he's under God's subjection. He has to ask for God's permission to tempt you, amen. So we say glory, salvation, and honor to him. Amen. Yeah. Oh, the red power to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is a mighty, and the Lord our God is a great Baptist Church, 6832 Thursday. You know we're always excited, always happy. Hallelujah to have you to worship with us. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Mola Fowler Roy, our lovely first lady, Minister Debbie Roy, and the entire Sovereign Grace Baptist Church of Atlanta. We want to let you know that we love you and that we're praying for you. We want you to be encouraged. We want, we want you to be challenged to follow Christ. Amen. We don't do, just do this because we don't have anything else to do. We do this because God has commanded us to do this. And we love praising God, don't we, church? Yeah. We're not a quiet church. We're not a sleepy church. We're a lively church, amen? We have life, amen? We love singing. We love fellowship. And most of all, we love worshiping and preaching the word of God, amen? Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning good morning to you. Looking lovely. Looking, lovely. Looking beautiful this morning. Looking Thank you for joining us you in our neighborhood this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Services in the hand of our past. Amen. I got I thank God. We're gonna have to come up for a name for our praise team, Pastor. Me, Mama, and are uh initials of praise, so we're gonna have to come up with a name. Maybe the abbreviation. I love, I got me a new pet. I said, Bri uh, Bri. Really? Yeah. It's Bri Bri to me, baby. <laughs> That's my nickname for you. That's Bri Bri, amen. Hallelujah, I love my cousin. Then I got my beautiful cousin, Sean, amen. We sound good, don't we? Yeah. Now, we're going to record a CD now. now we want all, you know, it's good. the CD going to cost you 20 coming through the door, amen. You know we like to joke. The Bible says that a merry heart is like a good medicine, yeah. but a broken spirit dries up the bones. So we as Sovereign Grace, we believe in fellowship, but we also believe in laughing, amen? Yeah. Remember what Heath Ledger said in the dark night, God's so serious. Yeah. We don't have to be serious all the time. We can praise God, we can enjoy life, we can crack jokes, and we can have fun. Ain't that right, church? Hallelujah. We serious about the gospel. We love to have fun. We love to joke. Amen. We love to fellowship and, and love on each other. Amen. That's the kind of church we go to. Ain't that right, God? We a loving church. We a fun church. Amen. No be better church to be at than Sovereign Grace. Amen. 
Like I've always said before, hands in the service of our pastor. If you ever in the land of community, amen. Come on down here. The church doors are open at the Simon Grace Baptist Church of Land of Maryland, 6832 3rd Street. Land of Maryland, 20706. And if you need a ride to church, maybe you don't have transportation. We got a beautiful church right outside. You can reach us at 301 441. 9001 to leave us a blessed message. Amen? Again, if you need a ride, transportation to church, and you live in the Atlanta community, you can call 301 441 9001 and we'll be happy to pick you up in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. How many folk are ready for the word of God this morning? Amen? I know that we sing, we shouted, we cried, we raised our hands, we sucked our feet. Now it's time for the, us to feast from the word of God. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to the gospel this morning. Amen? Amen. He preaching from one of my favorite passages of scripture. Amen. I love that tower, but I, it's just something special in my heart for Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Amen. And we got to be transformed. Amen? Amen? We got to undergo a transformation as a people of God. It starts in the heart and in the mind. Amen? Amen. When you get it in your heart and get it in your mind, then your life will be. Transform. You'll be revolutionized. Transform forever. Amen. Amen. Services in your hand, Pastor. We love you. We're looking forward to you preaching. Preach, God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You, Pastor, did well last week. Amen. Praise the Lord. He brought forth the word. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. For Amen. Our worship. Thank God for Amen. Our singers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. New Pastor Rolanda, amen. And Sean, Brittany, amen. Free up first lady where well, she can be preaching more. Amen. Thank God. Amen. You all missed it last week. But we're going to make sure y'all bring those children because we had a grill fired up next week. So make sure y'all bring these kids. And Rolanda know what she has to do. She's going to be talking to the parents about getting the, the children uh, choir together. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to have, we're going to have to get Tyrone working. So um, from now on, if you know, if you need, I'm going to make sure you have this number next week. And in some way, you know, your transportation is down, you need, you can call Tyrone and he'll come pick you up. We're going to put him to work. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So next week, Amen. Praise the Lord. He'll be here. Amen. So, amen. Thank God for you all give us. Amen. Praise the Lord. You bring your tithes and offering into the house. Praise the Lord. So the church man is going to be here for you. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Amen. We're grateful. Amen. Praise him. Now make sure, Sean, that we Rudy now make sure y'all get Rudy in the singing the Rex rehearsal now. Pick her up. Amen. Get Rudy in here. Amen. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to get us a senior choir. Y'all seniors know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm grateful. Amen. Praise him. Amen. For everything. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. God is good. As you, Pastor, said, we come to rejoice. And I think my eye read, thank God for those that's tuned in, that's watching, amen, Sister Carolyn, amen, and amen, Mother Rose, amen. I think one of them cicadas hit my eye, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. They'll fly all over on you, won't they? Come on. Amen. Yeah, they fly. Amen. I seen the other day little kids was playing with them. Yeah, they was picking them up trying to see how many they could gather. I said, we were... I was walking in the park, so I'm not going to say what type of children they were. They were, they were picking them up, playing with them. Amen. Amen. So I don't know if that's a good idea. Amen. amen. But they were picking them up, so they'll be here for a minute. Amen. They'll be gone, but they're going to leave their eggs in the ground. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We're grateful. Amen. Amen. If you are here, Amen. You have something to shout about. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, we titled our message today, Amen. Follow Jesus. Amen. Follow Jesus. 
Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to follow somebody, follow Pastor Roy. All right, y'all got it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Is that Whitney? Yeah. Y'all got to get Whitney singing too. She not going, amen. Come on, shout hallelujah, somebody. Amen. See, one thing about singing, you don't know what type of voice you have until you start singing. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 12. Amen. That was read in our hearing. Amen. We're not going to be long, but follow Jesus. But therefore, amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Hebrews 12. Right. We have the New King James uh, translation here. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we are also, since we are surrounded by so great crap, a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with race, run with endurance, amen, the race that is set before us. Now look at 12, chapter 12 too. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 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 This is also the first Sunday that we'll be, amen, um, having our communion service, where we always remember the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Follow Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Uh huh. The author and finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ, our great apostle, left heaven and came from God to us. Jesus Christ, no longer an apostle, but he became our high priest. Amen. And he went from us back to God. Amen. Amen. Portrays Jesus Christ as bringing us back with him. Amen. Amen. For to, to enjoy all the beauties that he has prepared for us. Amen. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of of our faith. Amen. Rolanda, well, if you will be so kind to get Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Amen. Praise the Lord. What he has started, he's going to complete it. Amen. Look, look at our board up here. It has being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you. What's he going to do? Come on, somebody. I have it up here. Hey, he's going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if he started it, come on, somebody. If he started, he's going to finish it. Go ahead, Pastor. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. He, he's not going to do a half job with you. Come on, somebody. He's going to do a full, completed work. Go ahead, Pastor. Y'all mark these scriptures down and read them in your devotional time. Now, as they sung that song, glory, hallelujah unto our God. You know what? We, we're going to be humming that song this week. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Whether you are teleworking or whether you're teleworking or sitting around your house, you're going to be humming that. Amen. Yeah. You pastor preached last week honoring God. Yeah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. A lot of folk are not honoring God. Uh, come on, but over the last year, I don't want to get too far off the script, but everybody, praise the Lord, was so humble and what we need God to, to intervene. Come on. Uh, 
We they were so humble and honoring God. People were praying even though even though they were in the house and, and they were reading their scriptures and they were saying, The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, somebody say yes. Oh, quickest thing get a little better. Come on, the, 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 the bullets start flying. Come on. Praise the Lord. The 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 the, 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 the pod is starting back up. Oh. Come on. Go ahead. Amen. Those who have. Y'all just got quiet on me there for a minute. Come on, shout hallelujah, somebody. Oh, but you have to make sure that you stay connected to the same.
in the word of God. He studied the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he remember at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Remember he taught doctors. Mm -hmm. And also taught the lawyers. He was skilled in the word. Most somebody shout out that number. Hallelujah. But now let's get Luke chapter number two, beginning at verse number 41. He lived his life by faith. He was human and divine. Last week we talked about how he, praise the Lord, stood up. And the temple talked about how the Spirit of God was on him and how it anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. Open the eyes of the blind, those that were blind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus Christ set at liberty those that were bruised, set them at liberty. Luke chapter 2, verse number 41. His parents went. Alana has it up here. His have it up here. He, he, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was, look at this, 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the, they said the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they, Luke 2, 45, so when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, look at Luke 2, 48, says, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your, look, your father and I have sought you anxious. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, why did you seek me? Did you not know what I, that I must be about my father's business? Amen. Come on, somebody say yes. Amen. And found them in the temple. Look at it. Talking, praise the Lord, in the midst of teachers. In other words, King James, Lord, skilled folk. Amen. Look at the wisdom that he had. Yes. You 
God when you're out of the will. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hours and hours at a time. And you might read one little verse, one little, one little, uh, what is that, this thing we give out the bread? What is it, little books? What is it, little books? Yeah, daily bread. Oh, I got my daily, come on, somebody. Oh, I got my daily bread in there, so I'm all right. Yeah, I'm sitting back, look, they got one little scripture, one little paragraph. I'm coming at them. Come on, you got to spend time in the word. You got to meditate. And the devil has zeroed in. He just focused in on the church. Mm -hmm. Individuals, the believers. Because we don't spend time with God. Mm -hmm. Like they did back in the day. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Back in the day, they spent time with God. Uh-huh. Didn't have a choice because there was no social media. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. There were no cell phones. Uh huh. Ask these kids on the bus when they was driving the bus, driving the bus, and they were on there. And I said, you know, I was driving. And say, I said, what would y'all do about them? What if we? I didn't have a cell phone when I went to school. They say, what? You didn't have no cell phone? How did you make it? If I had some of you young folk in here, would you make it? We didn't have, come on, boy, tell them, y'all. We didn't have cell phone when we went to school. We didn't have them. Look at Wendy. We didn't have no cell phone. We didn't even have a pager. Remember a little pager? So you didn't have nothing to do, could never but to get in the books. Amen. You, you couldn't stay at home. What's no watching computer and playing games? You are outside playing. Yeah. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. Get your knees dirty, have fun. Every day after school, what do we do? Oh, we going to play. <laughs> so back in the day, the whole thing was more focus in on the word. Mm -hmm. That's why you have so many pastors with this social media now. Amen. You pastor was sharing with me, he said, was a pastor that came in preaching and said, he was always posting things. Pastor here in Merlin for six years and said he stopped posting. Stopped posting pictures of him and his wife. Now you know there's a problem somewhere. Come on, somebody shout out to Lou. Now he posted pictures with his wife and family, and all of a sudden everything stopped. Yeah, and not only that, no longer, now he's no longer pastor of the church. And what that does is that affects the whole body of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks, they look at you. That's why I don't go to church. Amen. You're always messing up. That's why I'm not. Don't look unto man. Look unto who? Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Nothing can satisfy the soul that can encourage our faith like the word of God. Jesus said, talks about man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah, yeah. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Look after his baptism. Go to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. Then Jesus came down, came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John 3, Matthew 3, 14, and John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Look at this. When 316 of Matthew, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, a lightning upon him. And look at this 317 of Matthew. And suddenly a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Is the foundation 
of God's faith in your heart. In other words, you must be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Yes, yes. Jesus at, at, at 30 years old, then he's baptized of John. This is the first time here that he hears the voice of his father. And then look what happens after, after his baptism. Look what, look what happens, Jesus. Look at verse number four of Matthew. And Jesus was led by the Spirit up into the wilderness to be tempted of who? To be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived by faith. Mm -hmm. And you and I must live by faith. Jesus totally depended on the leading of the Holy Spirit. What about you and I? And look at Matthew 4 here, verse number 1. Let's see what he uses on the devil. Let's see what his weapon is. Look at here, Matthew 4 and 2. And when he fasted 40 days afterwards, 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Yeah. Devil is a lying wonder. You don't know who you're talking to. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he, look what Jesus did. He puts the word on it. Look at, but he, look at, look at 4, 4, Matthew. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Uh, come on, somebody. I love the Bible when I see this red writing because I know it's Jesus. Huh? Look what the devil said. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Look what Jesus does. He's got the word on him. Come on, he got the sword. He said, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 7, Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Put the word on him. He put the word. And the devil took him up, Matthew 4, 8, and the devil took him up, uh, up, on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said unto him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Yeah. Look at Jesus. Put the word on him again. That's all you got to tell the devil. It's written. Come on, somebody. Jesus said unto him in Matthew 14, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and only him you shall serve. Amen. Then look, look at look at 411. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. That's what I want. I want the angels. Come on, somebody say. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. 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 Jesus used the word against the attack of the devil. Jesus' faith was challenged. It's not your battle. It's God's battle. Come on, somebody say yes. Paul talked about, I am more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. Through him that loved me. I'm more than a conqueror. The devil comes out against Jesus. As a Christian, he tempts you and talks about you as a child of God. You claim to be a Christian and you sin over and over again. Don't y'all get quiet on me. That's what the devil does. He's accuser of the brethren. He's day and night up there saying, oh, you see that old pastor Roy? Ah, look at that thought, what he just thought. He ain't, he ain't nothing. He accuses us. Ah, look, 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 look what she, look what he did last night. Look at him. They ain't nothing. He accuses us. Uh-huh. Look, look at them bad children. Go to church talking about, yeah, Jesus love me. And look how mean they won't even be obedient to their parents. He even accused children. Come on, somebody say yeah. But you know what? He's faithful. 
Come on, somebody to forgive us if we confess it. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. When you were going, you were a child of God, he said, look at all that trouble you're going through. Yeah. Amen. Your faith yeah. has to be battled. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Your faith going to be tested. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got to look unto who? The author and the what? Finisher. Y'all read that this week over and over again. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't give in to the devil. He told him it is written, say. Mm -hmm. Put the word on him, church. If you're going to make it, it's going to have to be by the faith of God. Jesus lived by faith. He was human and divine. Hallelujah. And he put the devil where he belonged. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. With the word of God. Yeah. He's not just going to hear you just talking. You got to use the word on that devil. Yeah. Come on, somebody say, he ain't going to know without you just talking. You got to use the word on him. Yeah. Come on, somebody. He only responds. Come on. He's only going to get back unless you use the word on him. You ever got to do with somebody, whether it's somebody's store or whatever, and you say, name of Jesus, they back, they left you alone. Oh, I've been leaving them alone. Come on. I can't bother them. They, they, they know God. They know Jesus. I can leave them alone. Come on. Mm -hmm. Jesus live by faith. You're going to make it. That's how you got to live. You want somebody to say yes. Time to run from that lying wonder. Chasing you, turn around and chase him. Come on, somebody say it. Yeah. He ain't running from you, Satan. He's a liar. Come on. Mm -hmm. Say it don't mean stupid. Come on, somebody say yes. I'm not talking about fight now. You said pastor sitting up there. I'm not talking about fight. It don't mean stupid. Come on. I might be humble, but you ain't taking advantage of me. Come on, somebody say yes. Mm -hmm. It is written. Not a matter of what you try to do. Saying you are lying. By his stripes. Come on, somebody. I am healed. I'm more than a conqueror. Try to put that sickness on me, saying you're a liar. Yes. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. Through Jesus Christ, I have the victory yes. because yes. I'm his child. Yes. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. My faith is not based on what I feel or how I look. Right. My faith is based in the bedrock of his word. Yes. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. Heard Aunt Martha talking about the doctors. I know that. We know that. All of us yeah. know that. Might have to take a little pill, but who do we look to? Amen. I got common sense now. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. They get medication to deal with this body. I got common sense, but I'm looking unto Jesus. Yeah. The author and finisher of my faith. Because what happens when the doctors finish?
Was he D A A D? Dead means what? Dead. Dead means dead. You can say sleep, but dead means dead. Jesus lifted up his eyes, look at, and he said, he lived by the word. He said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. See, see, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is omnipresent. He can be everywhere, not like he can be everywhere at the same time. You said, God, you said, Pastor, how is that possible? Because he's God. Yeah. He can be everywhere at the same time. Yeah. And look, look at, look at yeah. level 42. And I know that he said, I know that you always hear me. Saints, we got faith. We know when we pray to God, we know he hears us. Yeah. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that yeah. you sent me. Look, look at 1143 of John. Now when he cried, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus didn't have enough sense but to get up. And he who, he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. A man of faith. He's the one that started up on the journey. He's going to see us through. Not only the pattern of faith, but the author of our faith. Here is where the parallel stops. All through the book of Hebrews and through the 11th chapter the Holy Spirit uses Old Testament patriarchs. We're allowed to get Hebrews chapter number 11 now. Just look at he uses Old Testament patriarchs. Mm -hmm. Come on somebody say yes. yes. By faith I'm just going to read a few by faith, Enoch. By faith, Abel. <laughs> By faith, no. Through faith. Read your, read your devotion time, Hebrews chapter 11. Through faith, Sarah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. But in the 12th chapter, Oh, somebody say yes. 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 But, but, but in the 12th chapter, it's saying, don't worry about all of them. Yes. Yes. Oh, somebody say yes. yes. Don't worry about all of them. Looking unto who? Looking unto. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yes. Jesus, who is the author and the finisher Amen. of our faith. Remember Matthew chapter 17. Let's go there. Jesus went to the Mount Transfiguration and took three of his chosen disciples with him. Look at Matthew 17, 1. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Look at, look at 17, 3. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, right. talking with them. Yeah. Matthew 17, 4. Then Peter answered and said, Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Yeah. And look at this, 17.5 of Matthew. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And here comes that voice. Suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just hear 
Come on, somebody say yes. In other words, he's here. He's my beloved son. He does not want to stay there and the they want to stay on the mountain. The art and finish of our faith. We cannot draw our faith from Abraham. Even though he was called, even though we're called the sons of Abraham, we are to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We can draw his faith. Mm -hmm. Because we are his children. Jesus planted faith into the life of those he came in contact with. By his words. Mm -hmm. We read the words so that Jesus' faith is translated in our life, into our life. It is not our faith, but his faith. Have faith in God. You can speak to a mountain and it's got to move. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. When did our faith begin at Calvary? The devil and the demons thought they had Jesus. <laughs> Jesus did more damage to the devil's kingdom. He was here. What did he do? He was sick. Satan wanted to put sickness on folk. Open deaf ears, yeah. open blind eyes, yeah. cause the lame to walk, yeah. even raise the dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only that, cast out devils. He didn't speak them out, he cast them out. Yeah. Come on, somebody say, yeah, you can't speak yeah. no devil out them demons. You got to cast them out. Yeah. Come on, somebody say, yes. yes. He died on the third day. What happened on the third? He died, but what happened on the third day? He got up from the grave and declared, All power is in his hands. Three days and three nights, just as Jonah was in the well of the belly. So was the Son of Man in the heart of the earth. And he got on three days and three nights, went down to the lower parts of the earth, went to hell, and set free all of those that had died believing in God. Jesus got the keys. He's got the keys of hell, of death, and the grave. Got so many preachers. He believed in it. They're trying to preach him into heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know any kind of life that they live. They, we should just put them in heaven from behind the desk. No, you don't know the person you pre preach to, you preach to the living, and you let the family talk. You don't know the person, come on somebody, you getting up there talking, you don't know nothing, they just ask you to do the eulogy, and you hear what they tell you if you talk to them in their homes or whatever, but you preach to the living. A lot of preachers are doing that now. Come on, somebody say yes. They let the family speak about the lover, and they're pre they say a few words, but they're preaching to the living. Remember that song, let the life I live speak for me while I'm resting in my grave and nothing else can be said. Let the life I live speak for me. Y'all yeah. yeah. know you preach your own eulogy. You preach your own eulogy. Yeah. Well, somebody say it's a life you live. Yeah. Prayer, how many of y'all know prayer works? Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You pray for somebody, you don't say in your prayer, in the name of Pastor Roy, I pray. Yeah. No, you don't. You look at Jesus. You say in the name, you in your prayer, but in the name of Jesus. How many of y'all know at the name Jesus, the devil trembles? Come on, somebody say yes. You walk in the room, say, shh, 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 don't just be quiet. Oh, this shit, you that here. Don't just don't say nothing. Come on, somebody say yes. 
Oh, that's that church folk. They go to church. Oh, I don't say nothing now. Well, come on, somebody shout out there. That is good. I don't say nothing. Shh. They're going to another room or go to another area. No, I don't go around there. Come on, somebody say yes. He has given us authority to use his name. The Holy Ghost that he has given us. Jesus said the word, he said, the word that I speak, not of my words, but the one that sent me. He said, I can do nothing without my father. And we can do nothing without Jesus. Come on, somebody say yes. Uh-huh. Somebody said, oh, you got it this morning? Yeah, I woke myself up this morning. I set the clock. What time you get up? Oh, I got up at 7 30. I got up. Come on, somebody say yes. I know we say shower. Uh, what time you get up? I understand that. Well, I got up at such and such time. No, but the Lord woke you up and told you. Oh, the Lord woke you up and told you to get up. with a thing of love. What if he decided not to touch us this to wake you up? Some people thinking, Pastor, just talk. What are you talking about? What if he decided not to touch you? I'm asked Charles, Charles, where was you at last night when you were asleep? Before you woke up? Huh? What did he say? Huh? <laughs> Smart. You got to hope you record that. I got it. <laughs> Y'all see what that is? Where was he at when he went? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. You're smart. You're very intelligent. Okay. When you was in your room, sleep where were you? See? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. I can't, I can't get him, so I got to move. Sean, where were you at when you were asleep? Most of them, see, that's what we want. He, he right, he on it. See, that's what I'm saying. God, I know we should. And then he, look at, he wakes up, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. He wakes us up in the whole another thing. God is good. How many of you all know, I got to, he got a little shot. How many of y'all know, every day, oh, glory. Every day is a good day if I got up, if I'm alive. Just for himself. 
he went back to glory so that he could come back and take us with him. Yeah. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. Jesus is not selfish. Look at John chapter 14, the first three verses. I'm getting a little warm here. Let not your heart be troubled. Yes. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. A million mansions. Yes. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yes. Now, he said, y'all got this? He said, I'm going away. Yes. I'm to prepare a place for you. Yes. And then when I get ready, he said, look at 14.3 of John, and, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Yes. And I'm, in other words, I'm going to come get you. Yes. Oh, let me come on, somebody. I just got to shout. Praise the He said, if I go, I, I'm going. Is Jesus a liar? No, he's not. He said, I'm, he said, I'm preparing a place. Yes. Remember 
now. We talked about staying in the word. That your faith will grow. Jesus prayed for people. It's personal high priest. A faith that will keep you. Because sometimes your faith will get weak. Sometimes we understand this human also. Sometimes the shield of faith gets battered. When you're fighting the head, the devil, when you're fighting him with the sword, in other words, don't admit to the devil that you don't have no more faith. Oh, Lord, don't tell him that. Me. Don't tell him that. Now, I understand all of us on the pulpit, praise God. Somebody say yes. 
praise the Lord. So the father, the big eagle, one day he pushed him out of the nest. And he began to soar through the air. Uh -huh. And you know what the little eagle said? The little eagle said, my dad, he don't like me anymore. He kicked me out of the family. He kicked me out of the nest. Praise the Lord. So as the big eagle began to fly, the little eagle looked at the big eagle. And he said, you know what? I'm going to flap my wings like my father is flapping his wings. Come on, somebody say yes. Oh, Lord. So the little eagle said, he said, I'm going to do what that is doing. Yeah. So the little eagle began to flap his wings. Yeah. And he said, whoa, yeah. I can fly just like my daddy. Yeah. In other words, yeah. your faith. Yeah. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to put your faith to work. Yeah. Come on, somebody say yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you're going to be put in situation yeah, that you never been put in before. Come on, somebody say it. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going to have to do, yeah, you're going to have to flap yeah, your wings of faith. Yeah. Can somebody say it? Yeah? Yeah. That's why we train up our children. Yeah. They are young, yeah. and then when they get old, yeah, they remember yeah. my grandmother, my mother, yeah. my father yeah. brought me to church. Yeah. Yes, and uh, they're going to remember yeah, the church house. Yeah. They're going to remember yeah, the preacher preaching. Yeah. They're going to remember yeah, the songs of praise. Yeah. Somebody I feel good here now. Who you gonna look to? Let's go back to Hebrew 12, verse number 2. He said, Look at it unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I can't look at you now. I gotta look at Jesus, the author. Yeah. 
What can you wash it? My sin. Nothing. But the blood. What can make you whole again? Nothing. But the blood. Somebody here ought to say that. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. Oh yeah, they were looking for God. They were praying. 
those that have not the spirit of his are none of his don't belong to him you're his child by the birth as far as to be born into the family of God you must be born again of the water and the spirit if you would say within your heart if the word has convicted your heart Father, I believe that you sent Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin. And I believe on the third day he rose from the grave. And I'm going to come in and suffer with you. But you got to believe. Praise God. We thank God for our word. Take no credit for nothing that was said and done. But read that 11 and chapter after. Chapter Hebrews in your emotional time. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. First thing, if you would stand and pray over the bread that represents his body, and the fruit of the vine that work represents his blood that was shed. Yes, Lord. Right In the name now. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Remember, pray now. Before you with your eyes closed. If there's anything you've done to. If you said something to someone and I realize that you hurt them, or if you think you thought wrong or did something wrong, ask God to forgive you for the project between you and God. I don't choose the people saying that they want to partake or not. It's between you and God, because God knows your heart. 